hear me? Y'all know about this time, man. Y'all know about this time. Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of the Cloudy Kickback. And today we have Mr. Justin Ferguson today, man. How you feeling today, baby? Man, I'm great, man. I appreciate you having me. Man. Oh, ain't no big deal. I appreciate you. You know, got your busy schedule, man. This man wears multiple hats, baby. Best to believe. So, I mean, I'm saying, you're an actor, a director, a coach, entrepreneur. Man, you got all the hats, don't you? I mean, yeah. how do you wear all these? Just, uh, you know, trying to, uh... Trying to provide, man. Trying to provide for family, community, yes, and uh, you know, just trying to contribute to society, bro. Okay, I love that. So, tell us about being a movie director. Um, well, this movie project that we're working on right now, okay, it came about because uh, I coached two groups of basketball kids, and uh, I just felt like their story needed to be told. Wow. Yeah. So you dived into it as an entrepreneur. Something new. So is it is it exciting? I mean, definitely exciting. Um, definitely expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, even though it's about a local team, yes, the documentary is taking me all over the country, man. Wow. To uh, interview uh, teams that we played against, rival coaches, um, coaches that was once from this area, and players that was once from this area, that's either coaching or playing. In other cities and other states. Okay. So it, it's been rigorous, man. But uh, we finally here, ten days away from the movie. Wow, program. ten days away, huh? For sure. So, how long has this process been in motion? Uh, we started filming in 2015. Wow. Yeah. 2015. That's amazing. So this is a, a huge documentary. So we're gonna have yeah. some great content. For so sure. You covering a nice amount of time. For sure. And uh, it even. Well, you know, the the thing about that, we started filming the players in 2015. Okay. But the documentary actually goes back as far as my childhood. Wow. Um, as a kid growing up in the Lee Harbor community. Yes, okay. So you made your local. That's fire. So, and then you're as a, a business owner in your own community that you grew Definitely. up in. Definitely. That's pretty cool. Definitely. I mean, that's a hell of a rotation. Definitely. Homegrown, bro. So, all right. Well, give us some insight on Rebels of Documentary. Um, the Rebels documentary, we, uh, the Rebels, we started in 2015, and uh, it started with a group of kids uh, that played uh, in three schools, okay. Shaker, yes. Euclid, and Brush. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so Premier had, schools, too. For sure. We had John Hughley and Corey Floyd over at Brush. We had Nicholas Ferguson, Dakota Cochran. Uh, che Johnson at Shaker, mm -hmm. and then we had Garvin Clark um, coming out of Euclid, and then we had a kid from Twinsburg as well. Wow! And one from Sandusky, my fault. Is it hard to, you know, pick the students? I mean, pick the athletes? I mean, or were you just uh, just more? Of man, honestly, uh, man, God sent them kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't a traditional basketball coach. Okay. And um, I had no basketball background, experience, or pedigree. Mm. Um, I, I think I was just chosen by God to coach a certain group of kids, man. Okay. Impact their life. Yes, sir. Yeah. They got the right one. So, when is Rebels releasing, and how can we tune in? Um, the Rebels, the Rise of the Rebels uh, will be premiering at Shaker Square April 10th at 7 p.m. Yes, sir. We're doing one show in that night, but we had a whole theater. We had the whole six theater rooms at Shaker's Wow, Park wow. On lock for that night. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is it hard to parlay that? I mean, damn, uh, to lock the whole movie theater up? That's some, that's some old, you know. I'm going to give credit to my team. Man. Okay. My team handled that. I haven't had one conversation with Shaker. Mm -hmm. So, uh you know, participants on my team, man, the, the people that's handling that business side of it. Yes, sir. Um, orchestrated that. And, and shout out to Shaker Square, man, for yeah, showing us love. And, and Legendary theaters. I fuck with Shaker Square theaters. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Throwback. Yes, sir. So how hard is it to get so many working parts together from cameras to actors to locations? Uh, it's hard because I, I never had any experience filming, directing, or editing mm -hmm. uh, a movie. But um, I had reached out to so many people, man, that just didn't believe in the story. Um, people who had the ability to bring this movie to life, they didn't believe in the story. Okay. And uh, so I couldn't really garner 
no help or support for the movie. Wow. For the production aspect of it. Um, so I ended up having to, you know, do it on my own with a small group of uh, small group of people helping okay. me with editing, filming, and producing. I mean, being that you didn't tap in, is this something that you see yourself doing more? Or? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. You know, as a kid, I always wanted to go to Hollywood and be involved with mm -hmm. movies. And, you know, I could say that, you know, the power is in the tongue. And, you know, that's something that as a kid I spoke into existence. I kind of got away from as I grew and uh, got involved in criminal things. And, really? Um, legitimate business and coaching, you know, um, me producing a movie was the furthest thing uh, on my mind. But yes, I would like to uh, continue uh, dealing with films and production and things of that nature. Okay. I'm excited to see the project. So what's your overall vision? I mean, what do you want to come from this documentary? Um, I want to pay homage to everyone that was involved in helping these groups of young men. Um, I want to pay homage to the young men, the athletes, uh -huh. and um, I just want want their story to be told. They're not the traditional group of kids that play AAU that come from suburban homes, two-parent households. Most of the players that I coach come from uh, single-parent homes where they only had the mother in the house. Um, so struggles. Yeah, impoverished communities, uh, lack of resources, and uh, they made it up. Yeah. You know, we had some kids that, uh, we got one kid that's facing life in prison on a murder charge right wow. now. We have one kid that just got out of prison. Mm -hmm. um, we had one kid that was murdered. Wow. Um, but outside of those three, mm -hmm. literally every other player that has come from the program has been a success story. And even the two, the one kid that's coming out of prison, um, he he has a successful music career right now. Wow. And uh, his name is Jediah Petway. Okay, so and, I'm Jediah. Yep, yep. And uh, the kid that's, that's currently incarcerated fighting the case, his story ain't over. Okay. It's so, not you know, he very well uh, could become a success story because... He gonna have the opportunity one day to turn everything around and right their wrongs, if you know if he's even, you know, guilty of what they're charging. But mm -hmm. you know, he may beat the case. He may come out on top of it, and his uh, his redemption path could start sooner rather than later. Agreed. Okay. Well said. So, what's the most difficult part about creating and starring in a documentary? Uh, that's difficult in itself. Like mm -hmm. doing both. Um, actually, you know, being one of the uh, people that's being highlighted on the film and actually bringing the story to life and being charged with bringing the story to life is, is, is very difficult. Okay. But, uh, you know, everyone that's involved right now, they, they think we have a good product on hand and uh, I hope the finished product is, is a success. Okay, I'm sure it will be. So have you always been excited to be an actor, to tap in? Was it hard reading lines? I mean... No, because it, it's yeah. actually a documentary, so it wasn't no lines, nothing okay. was scripted. Um, a lot of the uh, film work that was done was actually catching me in real life situations as far as me driving the players to tournaments, mm -hmm. dealing with them um, from a coach and player perspective. And uh, so footage of me coaching. Okay, well, y'all doing live. Is it hard to catch all this? I mean, you got real live content happening. I mean, pressure situations. We have some good cameramen during the process of mm -hmm. filming. Uh, we have some professional guys at different points in filming. And we also have some less professional people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the film was shot on uh, cameras professional grade cameras but a lot of it was also shot on iPhones. Okay. Yeah. No shit. Apple do a good job with their product. For sure. <laughs> For sure. So I'm gonna jump on the on, on the other side. So Ferguson Motorsports, I mean tell us about that business. Uh, Ferguson Motorsports is our power sports dealership. We um we sell new, used and refurbished uh, power sports. 
dirt bikes, four wheelers, UTVs, ATVs, Dang. things of that nature. You yeah, just tapped in all lines. That's so that's so swaggy. I mean, look, it's it's motivating for me as an entrepreneur. And just hustling and grinding, man. Um, you know, nowadays you gotta have multiple streams of income, mm -hmm. which you know I see how you rolling uh, with your different businesses, yes, man. Sir. And you know, it's the same hustle, same grind, man. Just finding uh, new new ways to generate revenue so we could got to do everything we want to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want a Ferrari. <laughs> All right. So tell us about being a coach outside of the documentary. Just like, where's the passion in that? Um, the passion is, uh, I would say it was a calling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I really wanted to do. And as you'll see in the movie, my chance to coach really came from me substituting for somebody. I was just a father on the team. Okay. And the gentleman that was coaching had uh, called me and asked me, could I fill in for him? you know, for the weekend, and I did so that the boys wouldn't have to forfeit. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of created that fire and intensity inside of me. Really? Um, and that's how everything got started. But coaching, man, is it's a calling. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say that I ain't really no coach because I really don't. I ain't really a traditional X and O's basketball guy. I'm just a guy that know how to motivate mm -hmm. and bring the best out of the young man. And so you're a player's coach? Yeah, I'm a player's coach. Which is definitely key. I mean, damn. If, you know, if, if I need a mentor and someone to tap me into my untapped potential, you know, X's and O's and somebody being mad aggressive with me might not be the key. Right, right, you, know, right. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I feel that. I respect that. So, all right, guys. I mean, Mr. Ferguson ain't ready, but you know what time it is? It's time for... The ratchet rundown, baby. You know what I'm saying? A little ratchet rundown. A little ratchet rundown. So, what you got? Who you got, man? You got you got King James or, or, or Michael Michael Jordan? Man, I'm going with MJ. <laughs> I'm going with MJ all day. MJ all day, man. What's up? Well, you know, I'm you know I'm fucking with King James, baby. You know what I'm saying? Sure. King James, sure. you know what I'm saying? He just he got that sauce. So I just feel like if if, if LeBron had a legendary coach. Legendary uh, two, right. uh, defensive legendary, uh, you know, what, Dennis Rodman, for like seven years, right. he would have six rings too. It's you know what I'm saying? You know, my thing is with this, you know, conversation, it's just like, I don't think there's no right answer or no wrong answer. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, if you coaching, for one, you know, you ain't. You can't really choose between the two. You'll take both of them. Oh, you you ain't lot. <laughs> so, um, and then for two, I think it's just all the uh, it all come down to opinion, man. And then I don't think it's I don't think one is better than the other. I don't think you know Mike is better than uh, LeBron or LeBron is better than Mike. I just okay. if I had to choose, I just like Mike Swag a little bit different. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if LeBron was from Cleveland, he'd be a little bit more swaggy, a little bit more aggressive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I think LeBron would be aggressive. You know what I'm saying? But like, you know what I'm saying? We would, we would have got a little bit more. So, <laughs> so, all right, give us, give us six things you can't live without. Um, six things I can't live without. Mm -hmm. um, shit, man. Six things I can't live without. Uh, yeah, we can be as general as you want to be, and you know, and look, shit, money is my number one shit. I need that. <laughs> Six things I can't live without, man. That's a tough question, bro. Mm -hmm. You caught me off guard. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Six things I can't live without. The first thing I'm gonna say, man, you know, my first priority, man, is my health. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want that. Number one is my health. Number two is my mental health. My mental, uh, I'll put that as number one. You know, okay. Number one is my mental health, my peace, peace of mind. Um, number two, physical health. Um, okay. He's a good ass, it's off rip. Number, <laughs> number three, man, I'm in love with my woman. You know, her name is Carla. Um, I can't live without her. Shout to Carla, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying? Can't live without her. Um, <laughs> Number four, uh, my kids, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, number five, 
my passion just for business and for creativity. Yes, sir. You know, I can't live without that. And number uh, six is just the opportunity God gives me every day when I wake up. So number six is that opportunity, that, that chance and that choice that we all got every day. Wow. For, for someone who just got caught on the spot, those are some great ass answers. <laughs> like, bro, those are like the best answers I've got on that question. Like, no cap. Like, those, like, we both made your boy. Shit, you hear me? <laughs> Shit, you hear me? <laughs> All right, so, random question. What's, what's your sign? You, Scorpio. Scorpio, okay. Scorpio, yeah. All right, I like that. Yeah. Okay, no doubt. So, is, is flirting cheating? Uh, you ask me. Yeah. I say yeah. I say flirting is cheating because uh, you know everything is all about motive, man. Okay. Oh, right. You know if we ain't got no motive, what we flirting for? I agree. I agree. Why we it right. ain't the time? Right. You already <laughs> know, like you know, if they bite, you know what it's gonna lead to. Yeah, you ain't lie. You that's know, a good. Per- that's a good way to put it. If they yeah. bite. You what you fishing for? So you yeah, know, right. <laughs> right. That's that seed. You know what I'm saying? You plant that seed. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll say it's cheating. So what's your opinion on today's hip hop music? Ah man, shit, man. <laughs> man how old are you? How old are you? I'm 33. You 33? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So man, my opinion on today's hip hop music, man. Um, I ain't no big fan. <laughs> Just put it that simple. <laughs> you know, I like uh, I'm more in the old school hip hop. I don't knock the new school hip hop. I think the beats. I love the beats of today's hip hop. The production, the yeah. beats. I love it. Um, I I just can't get into some of the topics or whatever. You know, I'm a little more old school. I like Nas, mm-hmm. Pop. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jay Z. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do fuck with some of the newer artists, but um, I just like, man, I like to tap into shit that's gonna motivate me to go get it. Yes, sir. And um, some of them do, some of them don't. Yeah, these new generations, they be they some drug heads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> real poppin' ass. Drinking, <laughs> gun shoot, man. I'm like, y'all niggas is tripping. Yeah. I mean, sure. being that you so close to the youth, I mean, what would you give them some insight on being more polished? How do they put some polish up a little bit? You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, you know, honestly, man, I don't think it's no, you know, advice we can give them mm-hmm. other than lead by example. Okay. Um. You know, when I was growing up, you know, a lot of us gravitated towards guys that hustled, um, guys who had the clothes we wanted, the cars we wanted, Mm -hmm. the businesses, the women, the lifestyle. So um, that's what a lot of us gravitated towards. And, you know, it's two things you could do when you get the attention of the youth. You can either give them real shit or you can give them bullshit. And I think in order for us to get their ear, we just gotta lead by example. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta have the things that they want. Yes. And then once they know we care about them mm-hmm. and they know we genuine, yep. then they'll take their advice. And nine times out of 10, what I've seen with youth, um, nine out of 10 times, given an opportunity, yeah. They gonna take the they gonna take the good road. Okay. So you know a kid that's hooping, if he got to make a decision whether he going back to the hood or going to college to play basketball, be the man, be around females, yep. get some of that nil money, <laughs> get a car, get yep. clothes. Yep. They gonna take that road. Wow. Um, and I've seen it firsthand. Um, As they should, shit. And it's the kids, man, that don't have the opportunity. That you know end it, end up, you know, in the worse off situation. So I think it's all about our generation, just man providing opportunities. Okay. And uh, that's the only way we're gonna save some of them. I think that's I think that's well said. Yeah. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if I, you know, back in my day, man, I did five years in the feds. Okay. If, if I would have had other options. Which I did have other options, but they ain't the options that I wanted. 
would you say that mentorship is missing? Like, if you had a mentor then, would you have to say you it wouldn't have parlayed? Yeah, because, um, yeah, I would. Because I would say, like, my father was a successful entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but his style of communication didn't reach me. Okay. You know, the way he delivered what he was trying to deliver to me, mm -hmm. I wasn't receptive towards it. Okay. Um, now, if that delivery had came in the form of me being able to receive it, mm -hmm. or if it would have came from uh, somebody whose opinion... Um, you value deeper? Value, I ain't going to say deeper, but valued in a different way. Uh-huh. Um, I might have been more inclined to get the message at that point in time. Okay. And it could have saved me some time. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, shit. I agree. I mean, look, I ain't find out what a guidance counselor was until I was 33. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo, I was in high school. Y'all was supposed to guide my motherfucking ass. Y'all you know saying, damn, y'all was supposed to turn me up. So, what's the best hood food spot we got? You know what I'm saying? Uh, the best hood food spot? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> man. Yeah. In my opinion, man, I like heavy on the sides up on Northfield and Mars. I'm out here. You ain't here? Heavy on the sides? Oh, man, they shit. They shit. What, what they be having? Like, it's soul food? Yeah, they, um, everything they got is made out of turkey, fish, or chicken. Okay, okay. And, um... That's hard. Uh, heavy on the sides. Heavy huh? on the sides. I like the name. They specialize in, in sides, man. They yams, mac, they greens, green beans. Um, they got a turkey, uh, meatloaf. Okay. They, they should be hidden. <laughs> yeah, they should All right, be I'm going to have to get hit. All right, as an entrepreneur, man, I got to ask you this. What's the most money you done fucked up and got back? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The most money I done fucked up and got back, like, um, man. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna answer that camera, bro. I, I can't do it, bro. I, you know, I got some, I got some, I got some, I got some stuff going on. Hey, uh, all right, we don't want to put that out there, you know what I'm saying? All right, what come first, talent or swag? You said talent or swag? Mm-hmm. Um, I say swag. Swag? Yeah, because, uh, you know, in the businesses, in 90% of the businesses out here, man, mm -hmm. Um, your swag and your business etiquette is is eighty percent of it, and the talent is twenty percent. Okay. And you know, if you talented but you ain't got no business acumen or you don't make intelligent decisions, your talent don't mean nothing. Damn, you got some great perspective, B. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. I really feel like there's some gems in this interview. For no sure. cap. And then you know, man, the, the nigga with swag can always. Parlay, yeah, <laughs> make something happen, to, get into oil and into some and some, some sure. crap. Yeah. Or control, <laughs> manipulate, mm -hmm. or manage talent. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? I do. So the talent, it's a lot of talent out here, but you know, if, if, if talent ain't, uh, it's like that saying, hard work beat talent, mm -hmm. when talent start working hard. Okay. You know, and I think swag is a part of your work ethic and how you approach whatever you're dealing with. So if you approach it and your swag is where it needs to be, you're going to be able to finesse, maneuver, and position yourself to, uh, you know, to out, out maneuver talent. All right, so boom. If your phone got hacked mm. and your pictures and your text messages got released, which one would you rather be out there? You said... Your, your, photo, your photo gallery or your whole text message the log? Which one would you rather the, be public? Man, it, it wouldn't matter. Bro. It wouldn't matter? No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm an open book, man. Okay. All right, I right, know if you got some pinos up in your photo gallery, everybody going to see your sauce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 out there, you know, should I make sure... I'll say my fucking uh you can you can have my texts. You can have my text. I ain't got nothing going on over there. Alright, so tell us about growing up. It seems like you were sports sports oriented. Yeah. 
So growing up, man, my father was a karate teacher. His name was Ken Ferguson. Um, he taught karate, taught a bunch of national champions. Wow. So I grew up in a fighting family. I grew up as a fighter, traveled all over the world fighting. Wow. Um, I played football, basketball, a little bit of basketball. I wasn't that good at basketball. Okay. Um, I won a Senate championship at JFK Kennedy. And uh, damn, I mean, shit, <laughs> that's yeah, saucy. Yeah, we, I we, mean, so you out here kicking ass, you can. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> if if I gotta, you know, my back get to the wall, I can I can hold my own. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I can hold my own. Uh, but yeah, man, I grew up in the sports, man. Love the sports, watching uh, Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. Jordan. Then with my favorite athletes, Ali, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yes, sir. So I'm a, I'm a sports guy, man. I love sports. So what you think about the new JFK? Uh, I ain't, man, I ain't had an opportunity to go in there yet. I rode past that boy to like, I'm like, damn. Yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah, I'm like, Sugar got a rival in this motherfucker. It's definitely flop. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask you a question. Uh... You said about Mike Tyson, you grew up watching Mike. Yeah. So what you think about him about to fight uh, Jake Paul? Uh, shit, I don't know. It's too early to tell, man. <laughs> it's too early to tell. I, I, I would love to see it be a real fight, but I'm hearing it's more like an exhibition. Yeah, they said they make it on, what, 16-ounce gloves? Yeah. It's not gonna, you can't win unless it's a knockout. Right. So shit, I mean, yeah, it, too many rounds. It's a money grab. It is, it, it is. is. I hope Mike knocked this nigga the fuck out. Me too. Out. You know what I'm saying? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your basketball program as a whole. Uh, my basketball program, man, is made up, you know. Because you got the youth going. Yeah. I'm like, damn. It's, <laughs> it's made up of a bunch of young, you know. Dog ass players, man. <laughs> they just all, they all come with the same mentality, man. They they want to shit on you. They want to, they want to dog you, you know. And it's, yeah, it's a blessing. blessing. It's a blessing to have that. Um, and you know the style of the players that I got, man. Our huddles are very aggressive. Uh, it's a lot that go on in the huddles, and uh, they respond. Okay. You know what I'm saying. They don't, it ain't really no whole bunch of wine and their bitch ass shit in the huddles. You know, I when you that. when you getting into their chest or you making eye contact and you aggressively mm -hmm. tearing into them, they respond. They don't they don't cower, they don't okay. they don't shrink, they don't back down, they don't quit. Uh they just a bunch of young dogs, man. That's hard. Yeah. You know? They got that ferocity, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, they do, they do. You know, we just had, in the state tournament, we just had nine players on three separate teams win state championships last weekend. Damn, last weekend? Yeah, last weekend. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. And this is perfect. You parlayed it right into your damn release? That's that's perfect. Yeah, that was planned. Okay. Yeah, was <laughs> the championship was planned. <laughs> For sure. So do your players get nervous about being featured on ESPN? Then? No. No, I mean, they, they on the big stage. They built for the spotlight, man, and they comfortable there. You okay. Know what I'm saying when the lights on, they they get it in. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your players, and you tell us about you putting your players in position. I'm sorry. Tell us about you putting your players in position to be successful. Uh, man, we just go out there and we look to compete against top talent. We go out there. I put my guys in the most expensive, uh, toughest tournaments. With wow. you know against the Nike sponsor, Adidas sponsor, Under Armour sponsor teams, they call them circuit teams. Mm -hmm. We're independent. Um, wow! And I just put them in in positions where they can showcase their talent and be challenged at the same time, which ultimately develops develops them and uh, uh, leads to, to their growth. Yeah, you know? them super confident. I mean, yeah. God lead. I mean, just to automatically just put them into some of the toughest times, and they and they and they and they, and they, and they, they yeah, succeed. They succeed. They wow. succeed. They rise to the to the occasion. So, as an entrepreneur, tell us about some of your other businesses. Um, man, I own a lot of companies here in the area. Um, some are doing very bad, some are doing very well, and some are just consistent. Um, I own a, an event center. Um, called Ken Ferguson Civic Center. 
I own a party rental company where we rent out tables, chairs, tents, bounce houses, mm -hmm. um, portable uh, refrigeration, a variety of things. Anything that can be used for an outdoor or indoor event, we rent it out. Okay. Um, I have a company called North Coast Financial Group where we sell merchant service and financial products. Uh, wild card prints, we do printing, we do banners, we do backdrops, we do flyers, business cards, wow. things of that nature. So we, we do a lot. I might have to tap into you on that, on that, on that last for venture sure. right there for sure. For sure. I need me a backdrop for when we traveling out. Niggas don't got no we the kind of kickback. All right. Let's make that happen. You see that? That's how you parlay. You know what I'm saying? You make sure you work with who work with you, huh? Ain't no doubt. Okay. Working, baby. So what's your favorite location to travel and do business? You be all over the place. Um, well... Right now, we're uh, building a party rental company in Central Florida, in Orlando, wow. the Tampa area, and also uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow, you going so, to Vegas with it? Yeah, so I wouldn't say I have a favorite place to do business. My ultimate goal eventually is I want satellite offices and warehouses, man, nationwide in, in all 50 states. Hey, yo, you know what I'm saying? This look, man, I love, I love the vision. Like this is the swaggy as hell. Like I swear, it's motivating me to, 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 to try to tap in with you. I mean, shit, this is vision, baby. Shit, <laughs> I'm gonna get you out of here on this. Okay. Where does your entrepreneurship drive come from, and what made you so sports oriented? Um, everything came from my father, man, uh, and just being around, you know, being around business people, man. Uh, you know, not one to be average, okay. uh, not one to, you know, drive average cars, live in average houses. I wanted the best of everything, mm -hmm. and I don't have the best of everything. Um, I got some things that's better than other people, but I also have some things that's not as good as other people. Okay. So um, I'm just striving to be the best version of myself, and uh, I got a bunch of goals, and things I want to accomplish uh, before I leave this earth that, that drive me on a day-to-day -day basis. I go to sleep thinking about it, and I wake up thinking about it. Okay. Um, and I want to make sure that my kids and my loved ones and um, my significant other, I want to make sure they have the best of, of you know, the best of, of things. Yes. And they have what they want. And, you know, I could be able to provide the things that they need and the things that they want. Yes, sir. So that's that's where the drive come from. But the drive originated with my father, man. My father was an entrepreneur. He was a fighter. Uh, the guys I came up around in our karate school, you know, if you was a nigga that got your ass beat at tournaments and stuff like that, you get clumped. Yeah. You know, and so that wasn't... That wasn't never in our pedigree. Mm -hmm. You know, we always was winners, man. And, uh, you know, we live by that mentality of if it got to be me or you, it's going to be you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every that's, time. that's where we come from. <laughs> okay. You know, we not walking away uh, with no regret mm -hmm. talking about what we should have done, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do next time. Yes. We don't get out like that. Yeah, I love that. We're we going to get it in now, mm -hmm. win, lose, or draw. Mm -hmm. We're going to put our best foot forward. Um, we're going to try to kick your ass. You know what I'm saying? We gonna, you we said gonna we try to war earlier. Hell yeah, we're going to try to dog you. Uh, anybody on our side, mm -hmm. we riding for you. Yes, sir. Um, you ain't on our side, we riding on you. And that's just, <laughs> you got that's just how we that's how we that's how we was bred, man. Hey, <laughs> hard as fuck. So dropping bars. <laughs> so that's that's where that, you know, passion to win, passion to be on the winning side, on the A side. Okay. That's where that came from, man. And our 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 background in, in fighting and combat. And then the business side of it, you know, we brought that mentality to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but at the same time, you know, it, it's all based based on love, man. Uh, we fight hard in a, in a boardroom and we fight hard in business to provide for the people we love yes. and ourselves, because mm -hmm. we love ourselves first and foremost. Agreed. Um, you know, when you're thinking about community, 
We fight for our community. We we provide jobs for people, man, because we genuinely, at the core, we love the niggas in our community. Yep. You know, whether they male, female, kids, adult, elderly, we fighting for them. Um, so it's all, man, a mentality of fighting for who we love and uh, fighting against anything that threatens that. Okay. You know? I think that's really well said, man. I, I said that a lot today. <laughs> you dropping some gems on me, man, I swear. On you guys, too. So tell everybody where to follow you. You got the event coming up, the, the documentary dropping on the 10th. Right. Tell us what else you got coming and, and, and we'll wrap it. Um, I'm going to start with what else we got coming. So, okay. man, we uh, we working on a TV show with a young lady named Carbe. Really? Like Carbe. Uh, we, yeah. We've had her on the show. You had her on the show. Yeah. So tomorrow we start filming her. Really? For a uh, reality show. That's hard. Yeah, so that's the next thing. I mean, Shout out to Carmen. That's hard as hell. <laughs> so, yeah, we follow her. We start following her tomorrow. Okay. Um, hopefully, we have her trailer done by the movie release. Mm -hmm. So, that could be something that we we promote during our movie uh, premiere on the 10th. Um, we got a reality show called The Grind, mm -hmm. which is about my team and that show follows us all over the world doing business, showing people, you know, how black African-American entrepreneurs get on. Okay. Um, the ups and the downs, the glamour and the, the grind and the mud and the dirt and everything you got to do to get it in. All the setbacks. For sure. For sure. The losses and mm -hmm. all that. The losses and the gains. Um, Y'all can follow me on Opportunities Unlimited on Instagram. Yes, That's sir. the only social media platform that I'm on. And uh, the movie will be at Atlas Cinemas at Shaker Square, April 10th. That's a Wednesday night at 7 p.m. i love to see everybody there. I'm open to take a picture with everybody on the red carpet that comes through the door. Mm -hmm. All the players, all the athletes involved in the movie will be there as well. Uh, we'll be doing some giveaways. And uh, it's just gonna be a hell of a night. So Cleveland, come out, and uh, you know, let's let's network and let's uh, let's get join together. The film. Yeah, that's gonna be hard. Thanks, bro. <laughs> and I appreciate you having me on here. Bro. Oh no, I appreciate you, man. Cause we it's, it's, it's it was organic how we tapped in, Ain't no and, doubt. and it's it's gonna be. And I'm gonna make sure that we get this released as soon as possible. Appreciate you, bro. Okay. Sure. Well, thanks, y'all, for tuning into another episode of the Kind of Kickback. And we'll see you next time. Peace.